think we're marketing partners. Uh, tell you a little bit about uh, his business, what he does. Uh, we do this because uh, without sponsors like this, and we couldn't do things like this. So, Ed, all yours. Thanks very much. Hi, everybody. Could I get a show of hands? Uh, how many people in the room still produce an a printed annual business directory or community guide of some sort? Okay, that's a good number of you. Oh, but forgive me for a moment because I needed to get a slideshow going here. Uh, slideshow. Come on. Okay. And the clicker. Got the clicker. So that's a good number of you that are producing printed guides. How many people are, are producing printed maps? Interesting, it looks like about half of you are producing printed maps. Uh, how many are producing a printed quarterly magazine or a printed newsletter still? Okay, again, interesting, about uh, half of you. How many of you just said, we just heard this, how many of you just said, screw the printed stuff, we're just going digital only? <laughs> Okay, a number of you. Well, behind me, WACE in July put together a poll that interestingly shows, they ask these questions, and they, they show that 72% of chambers polled still produce a printed membership directory, 73% still produce a printed map. About half are producing a, a magazine, and almost everybody is doing an emailed newsletter. Well, with, interestingly enough, Maps, it's counterintuitive. Why would you still produce a printed map? That was brought up a little bit earlier. Well, think about it from a hotel's perspective. If you go to a hotel, the hotel can circle where you're going to go. They can pinpoint some of the places that you want to go see. Realtors love maps, too. You know, they can circle, we're going to see this house, that house, this. Does anybody watch uh, House Hunters International? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they always go to three different places. Well, that's what realtors can do, and realtors love to advertise on those maps. I use my phone for, you know, driving around GPS and all that kind of stuff, but have you ever had your phone uh, when you're using the map and all of a sudden the map disappears and all you have is a blue dot and you're going, where am I going? <laughs> I got a blue dot, where am I going? Well, that's one of the challenges of having the digital technologies when you lose your cell service, all you have is a blue dot. So using them together is great. Printed business directories. If a, a business directory in and of itself, these things have been evolving, they're changing. But interesting that people are still doing printed business directories. Um, E-newsletters. Does anybody in the room have more than a 30% open rate on their e-newsletters? You, one, two? You guys must be doing something really good. Well, 30% is about the average open rate. So if you have 500 members and you're emailing your newsletter, 150 people are being con uh, connected with. You're connecting with 150 people. So you're still only connecting with 30% of your membership. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at how you're communicating and wh <coughs> what message you're communicating out there. So the um, question is, is print dead? Well, interestingly enough, the other day, I was on the Airbnb website um, booking a, a room for one of our employees. And look what came up, the new Airbnb Printed magazine. Airbnb, a digital company, is producing. Look, explore the magazine. You can get it in print, you can get it online. Who knew? <laughs> Several years ago, JCPenney announced a long term brick and mortar company. They stopped printing their catalog. Well, they announced after five years of not printing it, they brought it back because their studies show the printed catalog helps drive more online sales. So all of a sudden I started to get William Sonoma catalogs and all these catalogs that we used to get all the time. So, and there were so many others that had followed suit. Um, so is print dead? Well, it's evolving. So if you're doing just a basic printed business directory, yeah, so it's two months old by the time the, the, the publisher or you put it out, that's true. But from the perspective of the reader and the user, they don't know. They're looking at it as uh, a snapshot of products and services that they're on in the community. So they can be really, really strong lead behinds when they're, when they're properly done. Uh, if you're doing economic development, you can put an economic profile together. Rebrand your publication to whatever need it is that you're serving. An economic profile, you know, that's a great lead behind for an industrial uh, community that's trying to bring in businesses. 
What a great snapshot of the community. And the directory shows that snapshot of products and services that are available. Um, one important thing about when you're putting any kind of a, a publication or a website or anything together, ask these three questions. Who am I trying to reach? What am I trying to say? And how am I going to get it to them? So regardless of whether you're doing a directory, whether you're doing a guide, whether you're doing a map, identify those three things. I've seen publications that chambers do that turn into like these community magazines and it's fluff and it's lost its way. It doesn't talk about the chamber, it loses its message. So come back to the message, take some time to really figure out what that message is. How many people here um, take their publications and post the PDF to your website? Just the PDF only, not a flip book. All right, so for those who are still doing that, recommendation to you, stop it, stop it, it's 2017. <laughs> Write this down, www.issue.com. It's free, get yourself a free account, post, yeah, post your PDFs on there, you can buy a, a, a paid account, which will give you more stuff. You get an embed code, you embed the flip books in your website, it's free, it's 2017, guys. Doing PDFs online, oh, you gotta download them. It really is a pain in the butt. Now, printed publications, there's, they have to have the, diff, diff, the um, uh, digital partners. So uh, this was supposed to flip, but it's not flipping. So it's a flip book, okay? And this was on issue.com. For some, for some reason, it's not flipping. It, where? No. Yeah. yeah, I put it into PowerPoint. It's kind of not working. So anyway, well, you got the, so digital flipbooks. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. Websites. Um, oh, the digital flipbooks that we host for uh, the chambers that we have. The average is five and a half minutes that people are spending on the flipbooks, with the majority of traffic coming from desktops. So people are looking at these things on their computers, not necessarily. On, so it's important to have it do it, it's, uh, it's free. Websites, companion websites. How many chambers have one website at their chamber? A lot of you. How many of you have multiple websites? Good, so it's a trend in the chamber industry that you're not like, no, we need everybody to go to the chamber website. Well, it's, it's not a be all and end all for everybody. So one of the things that we do is provide public, uh, uh, websites that are content driven by the publication. So it doesn't matter if it's done by a publisher, whether you do it in-house, our service, we can put, turn it into a website. And again, it's not working, but you can click and click and make it more dynamic and all that kind of stuff. Um, oops. Uh, social media. Of course, tie it all together with social media. Um, I'm drawing a blank on your name. Mark! There we go. So Mark was saying, yes, tie them all together. So Mark, it, it's very important to make all these things work together. Take little snippets and bits and pieces of your printed publication. Push it out on social media. Drive people back to the website. Drive people back to the flip book. Drive people everywhere just so you're generating that kind of traffic um, so that they all work with in, in partnership. That's one of the services that Chamber Marketing Partners provides. If you don't have the time to do all that, we can pull a whole program together, pull the content. It doesn't matter if we've done it, if you guys have done it, somebody else have done it. We'll schedule it all out and push it out. You don't have to worry about it. We work together on that. So imagine a world where the chamber has complete control over its publications, complete control over the finances. If you want to make more money, make more money because you have a, a fully transparent budget. You say, wait, we want more money. Let's do that. OK, let's figure it out. It's your project. Well, what if you have full flexibility over your content? Say you wanted to have another article. You don't have to wait for somebody to say, no, we can't do that because the sales weren't enough. Get more articles in there. Just run it through the budget and say, that's what we want to do. For those chambers that are doing it in-house, you know what that means. Um, and um, hmm, what about chamber members to participate in parts of the project? Well, let's get RFPs out to those members. Let's get writers. Let's get photographers. Let's get uh, printers. Let's get distribution companies. You can do all that kind of stuff. Chamber Marketing Partners is a company that does all of that stuff. Our core competency is helping chambers who publish in-house. We help the chamber go in-house. Uh, we manage the project for the chamber. 
Uh, we ask all of those questions ahead of time. What do you want to say? Who do you want to say it to? How are you going to get there? And we help elevate that publication so that it ties all together. Don't take my word for it. Let's hear what some people have to say, and then I'll get out of your hair. If I can figure out how to use the screen. And the and. Oh, there it is. Oh, she's silent. <laughs> if you know Cindy, she's never silent. <laughs> the oh, there it is. Thank you. you know, one of the reasons that we decided to come in house is obviously control. Control. And much more tighter control than the content look and feel. One of the last things I want is that typical outside salesperson promising the moon and not delivering. CMP has a very professional team um, associated with them. They knew how I wanted to have the project sold. They were really listening to us. Keeping the printing local. I got budget, budget updates um, as they were necessary, but more frequently than I even needed them. I think this is the first time we've ever seen a budget from um, a company that- Thanks very much. Thank you.